Welcome everyone, how are you guys doing? Sorry I ran a little bit late today. I got a couple of um, important people asking me some questions, so I could not get on live until now. So welcome you guys to the MCS Weekly Update. Well, you see, good to see you as always. Michael, Joseph, Cody, um, Carlos, Rosenberg, John, uh, Tucker. Today's an exciting day. So uh, finally got the tornado in production uh, should be out in a couple months so I'm gonna start releasing that video that I promised you guys that I did um, several months ago I was doing um, several months like months ago I think before last year even I start doing the R&D process of the, of the tornado I'm gonna play a video for you guys so you can see um, what it takes to make a product the different itineration that we have to go through to get this project out and then I have four videos all together and of course by end of fourth video I'm gonna show you guys the final version of the tornado how it works how it shoots uh, all the little technical details of that when we get to the final stage by that time I would say we will be in about November and I'm shooting to get this out to you guys before Christmas that way you have something to look forward to um, for the holidays. Um, it's time schedule. It's still looking very strong. I might be off a little bit, but um, the, the time schedule right now, it's, you can have it around Christmas time. So I'm pushing for it. Hopefully, uh, I'm not far behind from my estimate schedule, but the idea is that you, you're, <laughs> you try to stay ahead, but life happens, things happen, machine fail, tool gets broken. Yeah, leak in the hydraulic pump, whichever things does happen. But um, the current plan right now is to have it by uh, Christmas time for you guys. All right, uh, Jonathan, good to see you. Timothy, uh, Cody, Javier, Brandon. Um, no more um, further ado. I'm gonna play the video for you guys. It's a good uh, five minutes video. Get you kind of acquainted with the kind of first time. If you guys have to visit me here, I've shown you guys the drawing of it a couple times. I mean, a different iteration of that. And if you uh, have visited me, I have to show I'll show you the final version of it. But if, I know a lot of you guys don't have the opportunity to come to uh, sunny California, um, so um, now you get to check it out uh, on um, on this video that I made for you guys. One second here, I'm gonna play it for you. All right, guys, I'm gonna switch the camera really quick. And then I'll play for you guys. Hey Corey, good to see you, Devin, um, Victor, Anthony, or Brian. All right, here, here's the video, guys. Combat sports. Hi, my name is K2 and MCS. And today I have a video for you on the tornado, the process of designing, the process of R and D and how we prototype the, um, the project and kind of go through the process for you so you can see how what it takes to bring a product into reality so first um before we do any type of project of course we kind of talk about it find out what the futures we're looking for what we're gonna what we're gonna do to the project before we get started and once we have an idea what we want we put it into a 3d format let me show you how what we have done and what it takes to actually put a, uh, a product together. So this is um, this is a base drawing of the first version that we did on the Tornado. The Tornado is the X7 conversion kit. It's um, bringing all the Tipman X7 classic back into circulation and to do that we decided to build it off on um, an AK version. There's a lot of markers up there. That SM, uh, SMG, there's uh, AR, but not really true base AK version. So we decided to work, um, put, make an AK version. So first, we just um, a bit off the AK platform. It has an AK mag release. It has the, uh, you know, the AK kind of top rail there, but we're not satisfied the way it looks. So we kind of scrapped that and we jumped to the next version. And this one we improved a little bit, a little better geometry, better design. We added a, a trigger frame, um, safety, um, even uh, a dedicated butt stop for it. But still, still missing some. So we decided that we're gonna make it 
of, of the AK-12. So the AK-12 has top rail run all the way um, to the back. We integrate the body with the handguard a lot better. And for the side here, uh, we did the um, we made it with the lock bolt. The same lock bolt can be used on the blizzard and the bolt. So kind of two in one system, rather than having to make a whole new lock bolt. We decided to kind of integrate that in there. Charging handle is kept the abduction. You can actually punch out the body and attach your charging handle on both left and right hand side. So once you punch out, that's it. You, you can't really change your mind afterward. The airline on the original uh, class, XM Classic, you still can use that if you still have it. So run right through the ball right here. Once you put the our trigger frame on, it will curve that up. So we did, um, this is the model that we decided to go with and we did print um, a 3D production of it, a sample of it right here. So this is how it comes out. Um, this support material, we have not break it down yet to kind of see the, the actual geometry of it and the inside here, we have to break this material down so we can put parts inside to do um, a fitting test and even do a shooting test from it. So you have the left side and right side body and this is a trigger frame. So you can see the geometry inside already been, the displacement's already there. It's, it's pretty much ready to go as you just drop in the parts trigger and the trigger pack and you can actually shoot this. And for, I just finished printing this um, other components over here. This is the handguard for This is how it comes out uh, from a printing machine. You can see that I have I have um, a safety here that you can pop out. Um, this is the handguard for This is not a handguard of another project. But what we did is, since I've made a print, um, I decided to put multiple components in there at the same time. That way, I get more out for print because each print takes time and you know, try to get as many projects in as possible. So, once you have this platform is printed out, you break it apart and you can pull the, the, the print off. You see that there. Um, support material. This support material helps prevent a collapse during the printing process. What we do is we break it off with like with a, a, a screwdriver or a small mallet. It just comes right off. And the small um, residual part we put into a bath and it kind of dissolves the little pieces off, little um, residue behind. And you have a perfectly good part that you can actually test. So for this handguard, you can see that once we print it out, it's pretty good a production part. Of course, there's still some fine tuning left to do, but this one came out beautiful. See that how it collapsed, print, I mean, attach on just like that. So now all we have to do is just break off the material. You can see the outside look. Just for, I print this one a little bit different because you don't want to consume too much printing material. So for this one, see how the geometry of this one kind of come out. Had we print this way, you see all the support material I have to build from the bottom and we don't want to use too much material um, to just to do that so we print it this way that allow it to use minimal material, material as possible and that's why it come out this uh, on the top side right inside and for this one if we did that the other way around it doesn't have in, let's type now it doesn't have the outside shooting that's why we print a flat surface and this one has that so we print up forward position so as we take it out, this is how, not this one, but see how the surface looks like? It's almost like a ready to go uh, production product. But this is very necessary. I mean, um, designing is much easier now because you have the opportunity to test the component, test for fitting, test with looks, the size, the shape. It gives the design process, um, I wouldn't say easier, but you get a much better product because you have a chance to kind of feel it, touch it before you actually go to tooling making molds, making tools. Once you've done that, it's kind of hard to go back and undo it. It's very expensive and very time consuming. So that's how 3D uh, process uh, work. It's, um, each process, it, each project is, it depends on the complexity of the project. It takes from one day to like a few months. On um, the Tornado, we're at about, I would say about eight months already because we keep on changing the design. We, we it's done, but then we're not satisfied with the way it looks, the way it feels. We have to go back and kind of make changes on it to get it right. Otherwise, what happens is that we're, we don't want to make a product that it's not ready. 
takes time to get it right and get it ready. All right, next uh, video we're going to do is we're going to um, break all the material off and then we will um, put it together and then we'll do a shooting test on it. Thank you for watching. All right, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, right? So that's part one of four, and then like I said, the fifth one, we're actually going to shoot test this thing and uh, bring it to current on what it is now. There are a couple different features in there that I didn't show, but I kind of kind of show you um, the different ways of we design that. You can see some of the drawing. I start with a really nice buttstock. It's kind of like uh, almost like a scar buttstock, but I found that it's too complex, too big, so I made it smaller. And as you go through the next couple videos, and as you can look through the fine product, you can see that uh, the mindset that we start out totally change as we go with through the design. So um, I'm looking about. I'm excited to show you guys, but you have to wait till next week to see the, the part two of the R and D uh, process of that product. So um, you guys want? To <laughs> now it's um it's one of those projects that it's. Uh, a lot of thoughts need to put into it to make sure that it come out different than what we're currently doing. As mentioned, there are a lot of black rifle out there. We've been doing a lot of that. We have a couple different models ourselves and so are other manufacturers making black rifles. So this this one body, um, you can put the AK wood attachment onto it, all the furniture that's out there. It will be really nice when you're able to put the whole thing together. Uh, I, I show you guys, I built in the magwell with the thumb, the, the latch release, it, it's kind of uh, compact into the body and that way when you actually put it together it's easier to uh, to put together, easy to clean, ex extremely uh, integrated into different aspects. One of the things that we're, that normally would not do is uh, put a lock bolt in, use an existing lock bolt, right? So with this one I use the blizzard lock bolt which means it's already you know, we have a lock bolt you just already have to just transition that into there and you're good to go so that's the idea behind that and hopefully by the time that uh, we get to um, the release date and you guys can see oh that that takes some time to get there oh Tim good to see you um, seen you in a few days <laughs> did you get my message about those tables Tim um, if you do uh, let me know I need those tables if you can get back to me uh, okay, so talking about, yes, I'm a question about tornado you can throw at me so I can answer it for you. You guys have a chance, go ahead and share this video, guys. Get a lot of information out there for people who don't really have access or not able to watch the live show. Maybe they can catch it off um, a recording and uh, maybe your share will have um, in their feed and they can check it out. So I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna auction for today. So this is the auction marker that we're doing. This is the Blizzard internal air. Uh, Maxwell built this. Um, something basic for you guys, starting at 100 bucks. Like I said, every week we're doing um, an auction anyway. So this is this is the one for this week. I'm gonna show you a shooting video. This little guy here has a seven inch quad rail. Um, got laser sight right in front right now. So you can actually switch left and right, um, turn your laser sight. Um, the back has this kind of a short cutoff carry handle, an M4 handle cutoff. You can adjust your windage and elevate, elevation adjustment right in the back. Of course, internal air, you can put your air in here. If you want to, you can upgrade the air tank. If you're the winner of this week auction, like that you can, um, as your request, we can upgrade this for your course. You have to pay your, to buy the tank and stuff, but you have that option to, um, okay, my laser's still on. You can see the laser's working here. Let me turn it off here. There. Alright, so as you can see that it's kind of nice. So you can turn the laser is not that bright, guys. So if you're gonna like a uh, daytime, you're not gonna see see that much, but you do a nighttime, um, you can easily switch the laser by just pushing a little button right here, just kind of slide, let you kind of grab onto it. Of course, nice right grip, really awesome grip. You can grab onto your thumb right there. What I like about Nike see how I able to um, control and retain my, I would say weapon or markers a lot better. See how I'm able to kind of grip against my shoulder here, let my hand kind of freed up a little bit so I have a little bit more um, 
ability to grab on the weapon a lot better. Right now, I can go here, grab, and you can change mech you with your right hand if you want to. If not, kind of keep your target a lot easier there. All right, so $100. Check it out, and then um, if you guys want to go for it, um, start 100 bucks on this. I'll play a video for you that I shoot right before I get on the show. Uh, I kind of every week kind of want to do a shooting video so you can see how it looks like and how it functions so that way when you do auction for it you get to check it out uh, Max released a 50 cow we never heard about them anymore huh? well 50 cow is kind of tough to um, to put out there's not that many equipment that doing 50 cow which means you're having one platform that's shooting 50 cow especially with the shape round it's kind of tough so the only way to actually really make 50 cal popular is having a lot of options kind of like what airsoft does uh, they have almost every single gun out there world war one world war two modern they have it all and having that variety really going to push it and at price point too airsoft you can buy a fifty dollar excuse me a twenty five dollar pistol up to a thousand dollar pistol so that like so whatever your pocketbook is you have that ability to get into the game based on your price point so you guys are going to um, get into the 50 cal definitely they're gonna need to really expand out the variety of what's available 68 caliber and that's what we do and it's really hard to do 68 because of the energy that it takes to propel a 68 caliber projectile out. That means the valve has to be a certain size and your air source has to be certain capacity too. Otherwise what happens is when you do, you build a system and you don't have enough capacity or the, enough energy to propel projectile, there's really no point of doing that, right? So you illuminate ammo, illuminate air source or um, the ability to just propel a projectile out that's gonna to be tough that's why I think if of course if you're doing 50 caliber you have a smaller caliber you use it less energy to for the flight that means that um, it'd be more efficient you get more shot per tank but but the I think the killer's heel is that you gotta have enough variety um, for market entry so hopefully they get something going on there and uh, I'd love to see what they put out and uh, they succeed at it all right, uh, let's go scroll. Oh, John, Maya, good to see you. Uh, <laughs> John, um, I will play a video again for you, um, and then you can check it out. Timothy, 150, congrats, bud. Hopefully, I'll hold up for you. Uh, Tim Hanley, see you this weekend. Yes, Tim, um, I was asking if you have any um, fold-out table at, um, at the event that I can use. Um, for Kilo 6-9. They didn't ship me any tables, so um, you can spare some for me. I tried to message you earlier, but I couldn't get a hold of you. Um, I'll be out there tomorrow, by the way. Um, I'll be at Kilo tomorrow evening. I'm flying out early tomorrow. That's, it's going to be 6 o'clock, uh, 6 a.m. flight. I'll be there about 5 p.m. And then um, we'll be out on the site um, uh, Friday morning. So you guys could go to Kilo 6-9. I got a lot of good stuff out there that I, that I shipped out. I know some of you guys messaged me last minute here trying to um, ask me to bring up some stuff. I don't know if we can bring anything out, uh, anything small that I can carry on. I'm, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not planning to check anything in, so uh, if you need something small like a, a screw <laughs> or o-ring or something uh, insignificant, I would definitely able to bring that out for you. But um, try not to ask me to bring anything big, and I have to check in. It's a pain to check stuff in. So if you have uh, uh, anything that you want to request last minute, thank you, Tim. Thanks for the confirmation. <laughs> I was worried there, uh, you know, uh, forgetting that I need those tables get showed up, and I get a get a, a tent where I put it, where I stuff to put on. Thank you, Tim. I'll see you um, tomorrow. Um, I know you guys, um, Omar and some um, New York players going to come out to the event and I got them those lock bolt. I really, my intention was to ship all this lock bolt out that uh, you guys were named last week to be the tester. Those are prototypes, so you guys, um, it's it's not the prettiest thing. It has the machine mark there, have some scratch because we have to kind of adjust it to make sure it's function. 
I get it to work and I test it. I think uh, the couple of people have already been testing that uh, Tip X um, lock bolt and it's working really well. So hopefully you guys have um, the good, I mean, hopefully you guys get the same result and, and able to get it um, to function great when you put them in. Definitely, uh, it's in production, so if there's any changes report that you need to give me a feedback on those Tip X lock bolt, let me know right away. But uh, I'm hoping to get them out for you guys soon. Uh, and about uh, hopefully, um, this is going to be a great Christmas. Have some great product. Uh, Espresso Tornado is on um, on the list there. I'm hoping to get the Box Mac 2 by Christmas time. It's about three months, three and a half. I would say not three months, but less than three months um, till Christmas. I'm actually, no. Um, December 25th, right? Today's, uh, I think, the three or four. Oh. Right about seven, seven, seven weeks. No, about uh, nine weeks. Right, about nine weeks left. Nine, ten weeks. So, but solid ten weeks. Hopefully, by the by the time we're able to get that um, out. If not, we'll probably off a little bit. But that's the plan. That's the, that's a current schedule. Could really some solid project be complete. And after this, I would you know, focus more on the bigger stuff, Hydra. I know some guy, somebody was asking about the Hydra earlier. Hydra and then back to the pistol. And once we got that done, um, we'll to get that uh, uh, focus more on the bigger project. I just really wanna knock out the small one, uh, completely um, get out of the way. None of this uh, intermediate stuff and then uh, <laughs> having to kind of worry about it. Damien, good to uh, hear that you got it. Um, I saw your post, but thank you for that. So um, if you have a chance, slap it on and um, try it out. See how it works for you, buddy. Box mag, uh, in about um, in about maybe two or three weeks, I can start showing the box mag and how it functions, how it shoot, and you guys can start pre-ordering them, especially if you guys have a, T a TMC or other platform you can also start to order them too if there's a platform that you guys want me to make uh, message me uh, I'll put, I mean most of these are gonna be based on how much interest is gonna be out there the one we definitely gonna make is of course the platform that runs on the Vortex Bolt Blizzard 468 um, and the current platform that use D Max and Helix um, we're gonna make that but other platform I can post it up and then you guys want them you have to kind of meet the minimum requirement for us just to make them because I don't want to over a lot of people interested in them um, I don't want to invest so much time and resource into it and you end up you making and people don't want it so uh, definitely it is right around the corner I'm hoping that I can show you guys in about two to the weeks that's it all right so um, let me show you guys really quick on the vi video of this blizzard how it shoots and then right after that I'm gonna play the video on the tornado again so that way anyone who came in um, late you you, <laughs> you missed the video I played earlier <laughs> you can check it out Dusty good to see you buddy so uh, yeah, raffled up marker bro but uh, sent the wrong person <laughs> never <laughs> all right man here is um here is the video on the uh, the blizzard that you guys are auctioned for today and then you guys any question about the um the blizzard or tornado i'm gonna play two video back to back so bear with me here um and then i'll get that to you guys right away here i'm gonna play video one second guys i'm gonna switch the camera and then uh i'll play it this is the marker you're gonna to auction today. Uh, a blizzard with internal air. The one you're gonna auction is gonna have the remote line. And if you want to get the air tank, you can get the air tank and upgrade that if you're the winner. So, of course, come with some basic setup here. The quad rail has a laser sight here in the front sight and a backup sight there. Of course, um, we're gonna do some shooting so we can see how it shoots. Back and back, here we go. Alright guys, this is for the auction today. Hopefully you are the winner.
Hi, this is K2 and MCS. So today I have a video for you on the tornado, the process of designing, the process of R&D, and how we prototype the, um, the project, and kind of go through the process for you so you can see how what it takes to bring a product into reality. So first, um, before we do any type of project, of course, we kind of talk about it, find out what the futures we're looking for, what we're gonna what we're going to do to the project before we get started. And then once we have an idea what we want, we put it into a 3D format. Let me show you how, what, what we've done and what it takes to actually put a, uh, a product together. So this is, um, this is the base drawing of the first version that we did on the Tornado. The Tornado is the X7 conversion kit. It's um, bringing all the Tickman X7 Classic back into circulation, and to do that, we decided to build it off on um, an AK version. There's a lot of markers up there. There's SM, uh, SMG, there's um, AR, but not really true base AK version, so we decided to work, um, put, make an AK version. So first, we just um, a built off the AK platform, it has an AK mag release, it has the, uh, the AK kind of half rail there, but we're not satisfied the way it looks, so we kind of scrapped that and we jumped to the next version. And this one we improved a little bit, a little better geometry, better design, we added a, a trigger frame, um, safety, um, even uh, a dedicated butt stop for it, but still, still missing some, so we decided that we're gonna make it off of the AK-12. So the AK-12 has top rail run all the way um, to the back. We integrate the body with the handguard a lot better. And for the side here, uh, we did the, um, we made it with the lock bolt. The same lock bolt can be used on a blizzard and a bolt. So kind of two in one system, rather than having to make a whole new lock bolt, we decided to kind of integrate that in there. Charging handle is the ambidextric. You can actually punch out the body and attach your charging handle both left and right hand side. So once you punch out, that's it. You, you can't really change your mind afterward. The airline on the original uh, class, X7 Classic, you still can use that if you still have it. So run right through the ball right here. Once you put the our trigger frame on, it will curve that up. So we did, um, this is the model that we decided to go with and we did print um, a 3D production of it. A sample of it right here. So this is how it comes out. Um, this support material we have not break it down yet to kind of see the, the actual geometry of it and the inside here we have to break this material down so we can put parts inside to do um, a fitting test and even do a shooting test from it. So you have a left side and right side body and this is a trigger frame so you can see the geometry inside or I mean the displacements already there. It's pretty much ready to go as you just drop in the parts trigger and the trigger pack and you can actually shoot this. And for, I just finished printing this um, other component over here. This is the handguard for it. This is how it comes out um, from a printing machine. You can see that I have, I have um, a safety here that you can pop out. Um, this is the handguard board. This is another handguard of another project. But what we did is, since I've made a print, um, I decided to put multiple components in there at the same time. That way, get more out per print because each print takes time, and you know, try to get as many project in as possible. So once you have this platform is printed out, you break it apart, and you can pull the the, the print off. You see that there. Um, Support material. This support material help prevent a collapse during the printing process. What we do is we break it off with like with a, a, a screwdriver or a small mallet. It just comes right off. And the small um, residual part we put into a bath and it can dissolve the little pieces off, little um, residue behind, and you have perfectly good part that you can actually test. So for this handguard, you can see that once we print it out. It's pretty good, a production part. Of course, there's still some fine tuning left to do, but this one came out beautiful. See that, how it collapsed, print, I mean, attach on just like that. So now, all we have to do is just break off the material. You can see the outside look. Just for 
I print this one a little bit different because you don't want to consume too much printing material. So for this one, see how the geometry of this one kind of come out? Had we print this way, you see all the support material I have to build from the bottom and we don't want to use too much material um, to just to do that. So we print it this way. That allow it to use minimal material, material as possible. And that's why it come out this uh, on the top side, right inside. And for this one, if we did that the other way around, it doesn't have in, let's type now. It doesn't have the outside shooting. That's why we print a flat surface. And this one has that, so we print a upward position. So as we take it out, this is how not this one, but see how the surface looks like. It's almost like a very go uh, production product. But this is very necessary. I mean. Um, designing is much easier now because you have the opportunity to test the component, test for fitting, test what looks, the size, the shape. It gives the design process, um, I wouldn't say easier, but you get a much better product because you have a chance to kind of feel it, touch it before you actually go to tooling, making molds, making tools. Once you've done that, it's kind of hard to go back and undo it. It's very expensive and very time consuming. So that's how 3D uh, process uh, to work. It's um, each process, each project is, it depends on the complexity of the project. It takes from one day to like a few months. On um, the tornado, we're at about I would say about eight months already because we keep on changing the design. We we it's done, but then we're not satisfied with the way it looks, the way it feels. We have to go back and kind of make changes on it to get it right. Otherwise, what happens is that we we don't want to make a product that it's not ready. Takes time, get it right, and get it ready. All right, next uh, video we're gonna do is we're gonna um, break all the material off, and then we will um, put together, and then we'll do a shooting test on it. Thank you for watching. All right, guys, um, that there is the video on the tornado. I know I played earlier, and a lot of you guys missed that video, so this. Uh, that's just a replay for you guys, and uh, if you guys are gonna want to watch it again. I will turn the video live on YouTube, and you can watch that just that segment only. Um, and next week on the show again, I'll play the second uh, segment of the part two of that video, so you can check it out and see what the next stage in that tornado video. Except like we're gonna have four uh, parts to it, and the final one I'm gonna show you guys live on. Maybe do a live video. Maybe I try to uh, transfer the um, the camera to the outside. We can actually shoot it, and then you can check it out. So it's a lot of work. I mean, you can see that the different time, the tuneration that we have to go through to make the tornado. It's not when we're first starting out. It was simple, just make a body, and all the body does is just transfer the component from the X7 Classic into the body. But as we built the the body realized well you know what we need to add a little more features to it why why not make it into uh, an 8k version rather than just the same exact thing that the X7 classic is you know? so instead of trying to do that we try to enhance a little bit more but as we built that we realized oh you know what we need to add in a new handguard okay we need to add a new buttstock that match to the body a lot better add in other features so each one of those changes takes time and each one of those changes takes um, creativity concept that you know have to start to come up with ideas and then find ways to overcome those ideas I mean that's the uh, the tricky part in uh, project and that's actually the fun part that's what I'd like to do most is actually bring those <laughs> bring those uh, you know start from your concept and then bring it into uh, 3d cat format and then from there you you, you make sample prototype into a physical um, part and from there uh, the next step is make it functional that's a that's a difficult part and from making it looks great into making it functional that's two different things right so um, next week I'm gonna show you the next part of it so you have any question on that you can actually let me know so um, as far as uh, this part right here, um, I, I saw you show you that video only right now. Joseph got a top lead at 200 bucks. This is the video, I mean, uh, this is the marker that you watched earlier that I played for the Blizzard um, this week auction. Like I said, it's a quad handguard. You get your internal air here, you get your you know, kind of the breech version of the AR handguard, I mean, AR sight, uh, internal air. If you want to get the internal air with the tank, you definitely can request that. We'll upgrade that for you. Of course, you got to pay for the tank. But um, it's an option you can have. The one thing that I cannot express enough is the 
clean and accessibility of the blizzard like i said you depress that pin you pull it out you pop it open now you have access to the chamber clean whatever you need to do most marker can't do that then put it back right there and then drop the pin in lock into place and it's rock and roll comes with an extract grip wrap it on your finger um, with your index finger on the front there kind of let you go grip on your rifle really good way to keep your weapon nice and tight all you need is actually the front finger right here see just index finger that love to help you kind of retain that weapon or let alone the rest of your grip and allow you kind of really grab and control and keep your rifle nice and tight and let you maneuver easily too all right guys so this is going on right now I guess we'll go after this this is the um, auction for this week box mech for my tip X uh, boy you guys gonna love what I'm doing on a tip X that's one of the next um, project I'm gonna show is I'm building a tip X body um, allow you to kind of change the tip X into its own life um, it is it's a project the reason why I'm doing a project because the tip X is small compact you can really bring that that platform into something completely different and allow especially small of the, the these you know <laughs> new players especially or for the younger kids who has like they want something small something light and something really compact for them uh 10 or 12 years old uh, or for the ladies that i think a tip x is ideal setup for that and uh, i'm building a full complete body for it. i think i showed you guys a um, couple of months ago how we start being a full body now made it really small and compact and then built the um, with the remote line built to the back and then with a box mech attached to the grip it's gonna be a really nice shooting machine there so I'm hoping to release that sometime next year but in the meantime um, right now the focus to get the box mech back into circulation like you said you you're when I go to all this big uh, when I go to all the big events especially uh, events that not a dedicated mech for event like um, Oklahoma D-Day and um, the last last weekend I just went to the Cave Nation or Ion Division Normandy all these events and I see a lot of mech vet players who are trying to use the equipment that I have and play against those hopper hopper players it's not a fair game because those guys can throw out a lot of balls but at the same time um, the MacFed players want to keep the realistic, want to keep that limited ammo, and that's what draw them. That's what make it fun for them. However, it would be such a great option for them if they can have the ability to have more firepower. And all they have to do is just take the mag out, you know, take the mag out, put a box mag in, and go and play. Boom, 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 boom. Have the, the high capacity that they need. Have a great time. Oh, next week, just drop a box mag off, slap a standard magazine in, and off skill, you can just go play um, MacFed games. That's I think that will bring a lot more players into the MacFed scene because right now, when people are trying to invest into MacFed, they feel that um, they're kind of narrowed down to the type of games that they play. So they're not really want to jump in to invest into equipment. By giving the opportunity, you know what? If you want to play against the hopper players at any field, any weekend, take the Mac out, stick a box Mac in, boom, boom. Still retain your original body, still retain that realisticness of your equipment, and still have a good time. That's that's the problem that I'm trying to solve. And then, okay, next week when you play at Kilo Six Nine or another Mac Fed event, drop that off, stick the Mac in. And boom, off you go, able to play MacFed. I think that's well, will definitely uh, will solve some of the issues out there for players and allow them to get into the MacFed or just at least play paintball together, right? I think uh, a lot of us play the sport because it really it draws us to <laughs> to shoot, right? It's, it's, it's a trigger type of sport. You just you just want to pew pew pew, or you just want to shoot targets. But this happens to be moving targets. And then the targets also shoot back at you. So that's a fun factor. And if you have the physical ability, you run, you jump, uh, you do barrel roll, but you don't have to. And you can be um, 
one of those players that kind of stick back a little bit, and, you know, take the uh, take cover, return fire, move up slowly, or you one of those that kind of physically enhance, just run and shoot, you know, you know, run and gun. So that's the reason why I'm focused more on the box mech trying to get it out. I think really you, know, you lit me up um, after this year Ion. I see a lot of TMC players, a lot of uh, mech fed players, a lot of people who want to uh, really play mags and fed against the hopper players at this big event they have a good time but if they wear the box mech they can have a great time and um, that would if people have you know players if you have a great time playing of course the sport will grow it will spread like a wildfire because you know it's the fun fact that goes way up when you have uh, more players to play with right so that's what I'm focusing on. Hopefully in about two or three weeks, I'll show you guys the next generation box mag and you can see what I'm talking about. Imagine, like I said, have the ability to switch on the fly and not worry about um, change your equipment. You don't have to kind of turn a dial or change the feed adapter or whatever to get a higher capacity shooting uh, system. Um, that there will silly change on what the current industry and where it's heading and definitely um, more players will come into the scene not just new players that already play the sport but players that don't normally play the sport so there um, are gonna be a lot of um, new players all right guys so um, if you have the question go ahead and uh, let me know on as far as um, about the, to the tornado or about the um, this auction markers or anything that if you want to address want me to address go ahead and let me know and I will able to address that for you uh, max loader max fed wins <laughs> max loader is um, it's a little bit much you know you have about a backpack when you like 2,000 rounds so a little bit much but I think it's all fun depends on the players like I said, our, our sport just you, know, you can be you can be all type of physical ability and play or sport. You can be a sl you know slow. You can be a fast person. You can be uh, a big person, be a small person. Doesn't matter size, shape, who you are. As long as you want to have a good time and you play a style that you want to play. You want to be a player that you know stay back a little bit. Sure. Um, move up slowly and you get one of those who just want to run and gun you, you can definitely do that too so it's actually that's a beauty of the, the sport is it's catered to you know whole spectrum of players um, not like some other sport where you gotta be you know, gotta fit certain build you gotta be you know have be certain weightage you can be certain size or um, you know, different certain physical ability to uh, participate so this uh it's a that's a great thing about what this sport is it's uh, all are welcome right <laughs> oh junior you need MSR MSR right now I have to make some adjustment because um, the round is off a little bit right now I want I'm able to get the 50 yard range but I'm not satisfied I need to make a slight adjustment to get further in that so I don't want to stop there I want to get the, the rounds to go further than I want I mean I want to beat what the, the goal I'm trying to set is more than 50 yards so I'm working on from 50 to 100 yards version now able to enhance that more for me to do that I have to make sure that the rounds is perfectly spec'd and nicely set that way I'm able to give the uh, the, the, these, the rounds going further than I originally said I want to make the truest possible at 50 yard range and able to get that right so back to um, adjustment a little bit but soon uh, we're almost there uh, I, like I said I don't want to just release a product and not able to deliver to the expectation that you guys are looking for I want to meet it and beat it that way you don't have to worry about the quality you don't have to worry about whether it able to shoot well you know that it will shoot well when, and when you have that confidence when you shoot these rounds make sure it fits well make sure that um, the specs is there for every round so that's that's hard to do but that's that I have to do is I don't really have a choice the an option that the, the market already 
have a benchmark um, first strike or is set like a baseline either kind of go um, within that range somewhere around there that way it um, it able to deliver the shot each time that you pull the trigger all right yeah come in boss <laughs> uh, Felix see you in a few days buddy uh, look forward to see you on Friday morning um, like I said I'm flying out tomorrow morning about 6 a.m. Uh, be in Pennsylvania about 5 p.m. Go get a good long rest and then I'll be out in the field um, early Friday. So um, hope to see you guys out there. How much will be a tornado cost non-conversion kit? The non-conversion kit I'm looking about depends on the setup that you do, Timothy. Uh, gonna run about 300 to 400 dollars. I have not really set the price on that yet because I don't know. Um, the production on it as far as which option I'm gonna put like, like I said there the, there's a full uh, version gonna be available you get the full handguard um, the, the full length with a new buttstock and everything to it so like I said I'm, I'm looking at about three to four hundred dollars depends on what the option that you choose and like the baseline that up I said I'll be out I'll kind of release that for you guys in the next uh, uh, no, no, next but it's like about five weeks so this is the first part of the video so this is part one uh, that I played today so I have three more part on the R&D part of it and then on the fifth week I will show you guys the final version how it looks how it functions shooting the whole shebang um, that way you get a full picture of from from start to finish on the product life and how we bring a product into production and how we bring a product to, into like physical world it's it's really interesting you know I sometimes when I go to a van and seeing people when I'm using and playing with the product that I work so long and hard on um, sometimes it doesn't really sink in because like I feel like I'm not finished you know I feel like okay I'm done with this project I'm on to the next so I feel like I'm not there yet every time I, I you know, I'm done with a project I move to the next one and I feel like I'm, I'm still working on it, so um, it's still not synced in that the, the the amount of of effort and time and resource I put into a project and and, um, and it's done. I feel like it's not never done because because um, <laughs> I'm still on a next project. That's um, that's crazy to say, but that that's that's how I rationalize it somehow. Okay, this year gonna be uh, <laughs> be lit. Um, this year, Alex, it's definitely is the year that we're putting out quite a few new product. Um, next year, some major one gonna be finished. I hope, you know, I won't really want to get some of the smaller one out this year. Next year, gonna try and knock out the Hydra and the pistol. As soon as I'm done with the smaller one, I'm gonna jump back onto like I said, the pistol, I didn't really want to complete it until we get the shape projectile out to make sure and, and get. Uh, it's a new platform completely. A total new uh, feeding system, new magazine. Um, so we want to able to make sure it works well with the shape round. Same thing with the Hydra. We want to get the, high, the the shape round done because it's so tied in into the shape projectile and to the MSR round. If we make the Hydra not able to um, get work well uh, with the shape round, it's gonna be oh man, it's gonna be so terrible, right? It's such a it's gonna be such a bad news. Imagine that we got this beautiful um, drum. Um, mag out and then it doesn't fit well with um, MSR rounds um, they can be a terrible setback same thing with a pistol so that's why we kind of put it off a little bit try and get this other small project done especially get the shape round done um, the, the box mag done the, the tornado and some of this march like them it's, it's gonna be crazy next year coming out this year uh, been real busy I've been knock out some major project but next year I gonna really uh, put my hat together and, um, and get with some uh, the team here and get those out for you. Uh, no tornado to give shit. <laughs> oh man, tornado! It's like I said, it's one of those projects. It's a little bit different. Normally, I would just you know, release it out and here it is. But tornado, like it's go to so many different uh, itinerary to get it done. Man, you are you, you have. You really gotta see the different um, part of the video, the different um, uh, video segment to see why it takes so long. The changes that we did for it. Okay. Um, P 
Peter close ball Corey good question that is a question that I've been asking Omar where is it he's still on it I think he's he's making prototype right now uh, I'll ask him what's going on with that um, next year too I mean that's I think that's in 2019 focus to 18 we only have about three months left in the calendar I really want to knock out some of these smaller projects get out of the way special except the the, the, the killer part um, the box may I get the tornado out so of course we, we, we we're crossing these things off the list guys so the more we cross off the list the closer we get to the main one and after that I really have no excuse for you guys or where are we at okay this is the project I'm on and um, that's the only thing I'm working on therefore we'll get it done sooner but I got some of these smaller ones and we'll to knock it out all right guys any question about um, right now Joseph Cunningham you are ahead of schedule $200 on this um, tackable blizzard so you guys want to up for it um, you can take this with from him if you want to this is the the auction for this week blizzard markers got a quad rail handguard the front side got a little laser going on here so you can actually switch on and off on the laser um, got the next strike grip right here for you guys of course you can upgrade to lock mode if you want to and then uh, another option with the air you can put in your internal air tank in there if you want to put it in there um, there's a lot of good option in there for you guys this is going off for $200 this is actually a great deal um, then you want to get onto this is actually you know if you already have a marker this is a fantastic opportunity to get a loan of markers and opportunity to get the, the one of those markers that you have a backup a, you know and you know a friend or someone need to play okay get this one to them so when you guys are going to uh, Kilo 69 uh, just a few days away stop by MCS booth I got some new stuff to show you guys if you need to purchase something I have there uh, I didn't get to bring a lot of the prototype because I'm not they're not ready to show you guys but I have the M82 there got some of the bolt new bolt markers there got a bunch of accessories uh, if you got uh, the uh, TAM to um, you know anytime stop by it uh, I'm not doing the STL drill there this year I don't have enough uh, resources to do that so hopefully next year or next uh, event I'll be able to do the SDL drill there for you guys why not add an FMG to the blueprint to the music as <laughs> um, Augustus I am hopefully I can get working with the music a little bit more I've been talking with Nelson on some of the project we can co-op with that but at this moment um, I am working slowly to move forward with them I think there are a lot of opportunity there to build some cross-platform um, but um, it is still we have some little, a lot of little things to iron out so hopefully in the coming year we want to have a little more free time I'm able to kind of implement that because right now I'm extremely oh man extremely busy with some of these projects um, you guys know I also do operation part of the company um, a lot of you guys um, call me for tech support you guys a lot call me on um, question with some of your equipment I do um, phone support to some of the emails so whenever you guys can uh, hit me on there I'm able to on there support you guys so that's on the day-to-day -day operation of course depends um, how my days like I actually um, pretty much I do everything here so not just beside doing the R&D part of the project uh, I, I do everything else as well so yes um, bear with me on those because the as the you know as the year progress I would to get closer like I said there's a couple of small projects I really want to knock out get out of the way so that way we can focus on a bigger one and uh, hopefully next year comes we have to get the uh, get back to the Hydra and then um, finish up the pistol that we started out a few years ago it's a project that uh, we work really hard on but it's gonna need the shape round to be completed first to make sure that it fits well and function well on those new equipment um, the new system we put together so when the tip x lock bolt going to be for sale and price Jason it's gonna be around $50 uh, 50 60 bucks around there uh, I don't have the exact price but it can be around that in that, in that vicinity and I'm hoping to release sometime Christmas as well in currently in production. I'm also waiting for some of the prototype testers to give me feedback. Um, I know, Kirk, you know, Omar's on here, 
and Damien, I can have a bunch of people going to Kill 69. So by the end of Kill 69, I should have all the feedback that I get um, that I need to finalize. If there's any tweak or change, so I would have, you know able to adjust it from there. And from there, I know a lot of people been asking me about that Tip X lock bolt uh, to the prototype. But the the thing is that I only have about 15 units, or I gave about 10 out. The rest I'm sending out to one, um, to each one of a major distributor around the world. It's going to Brazil, it's going to UK, going to Canada, going to Germany, France, and different locations that way that they all have opportunity to check them out as well. So you guys um, want to the results. There is a video um, that Brett from Fury, um, Team Fury, made last week. So you guys want to check that out, go to the site, uh, the MCS site, and search uh, Tipex Lock Bolt, or go to the YouTube channel and you can check it out. It's just, just, just search uh, Tipex Lock Bolt. There's a video there that being um, released on that. You guys want to check it out um, and see how it functions. But there's more video come out this week, and I know you guys want to test them out, but it's um, last week I gave them all out to a lot of people who were on here, and what I did is we try to get the community to kind of um, point out some of the key people that are willing to test them and then um, get them to kind of try it out for you guys. So in the future, again, um, I'm going to try and do the same, try not to get the same person who get the same, uh, get to test them everything, try to spread them out to new people, to people that doesn't have really good uh, you know, footing. I don't want to get all the biggest name in the industry to test them. It's great for what we do, but at the same time, we want to spread it out and get everyone to have an opportunity to check out our prototype that we do. So uh, it's kind of a way to bring more people into what we are currently doing and give an opportunity to kind of see how we work as well. So that's why I'm, I'm just not just going to pick the, uh, the, the, the most prominent uh, players in the industry to just give it to them so that way they get the most hit. That's, uh, that's great. but. I'm going to a different approach and then allow you guys to kind of see what they do and how they do it. All right. So, uh, Brazil, MacFed, their product gets expensive and rare. Jay, um, it's Brazil is a different part of the world and there are a few things, sometimes a sensitive product too. So that's why we kind of make sure that it, it, the, the different distributor are, are able to support you and able to bring the product so that way you can have them contact them and if you have any problem with them let me know I'll work with them for you but definitely they are the, the people to go to because in the long run wise they have to support you on that we can't just kind of um, send it out and not able to get them to support you we want able to create a supporting channel allow them to grow with the local scene as well so if you have any question uh, let us know on that uh, Tom, how are you doing? Uh, so hopefully, Tom, you are you come out to the event. Tom, message me. You want to come out? It's this weekend. That's the event I'm talking about. So, <laughs> Jason, I need sleep, man. I, um, you know, I like I said, I told you guys, I'm doing an average about 100 hours on a weekly basis. Um, I'm here at the office about 10 to 12 hours a day. Um, go home play with the kids for a few hours. Maybe sometimes I don't get to see them Hopefully I will be able to recover. I mean bring those time back But right now I got some major project. I want to knock out. I got some bigger one I'm working on right now, too I don't have the um, I can't really tell you what they are Until I get closer to what it is, but the idea is that I want to really knock out this year. This year has been uh, Really a tremendous push for MacFed and I want to be do my part and get this project out. Like I said, I, I believe that the box mag that we're putting out this year will really change on for the player's perspective. Allow them to play a hopper game and a MacFed game using the same equipment that they have and not having to worry about, oh, I invest into an equipment, but I could only play MacFed. Uh, I hear it all the time, and every time I hear it, oh man, I gotta get this player into the game. They want to in, in, uh, play, but the lim limit budget I'll, don't kind of hold them back. Not everyone has the same pocketbook, and not everyone has the same budget, right? Some of us, um, you know, get a, a professional and a little bit older, more established, we can buy anything we want. 
but some of these younger guys they, they, they get you know they work at a low paid job they just getting started out into life they uh, have limited allowance so they, they want to get into invest into something that they know they would use and able to like and enjoy as smart I mean that's a really smart way to look at it not just kind of you, know, you, you buy stuff and you don't like it and every kind of, you know what be become become paperweight and then um, be a waste and I, I that's like the worst thing ever right so I want to make something that people be proud of their investment and able to use from years to come and not worry about oh you know this is a bad investment that's like I know how it feels like so that's why I really want to get the box mag into circulation so that way um, you can invest into equipment and they're able to play all type of games you play it to hopper guys no problem you play at the Mac fed game no problem um, and it's inexpensive enough for you kind of able to do that so that's my goal and when I accomplish that it's allowed us to kind of get more equipment out there get more players out there and of course the more players go show to an event the more the field able to invest into their field because now they can you know they have the volume of players who come to their field and those field uh, able to invest into bigger and better project you know more infrastructure and of course as more players shows up and the event promoter able to you know they can forecast how many play will come to the event allow them to invest into the games or better better props better promotion get um, get the word out right get get more players on the field and that kind of expand out slowly with everything else it's, it's really um, kind of interdependent and of course people gonna go players gonna go to field to play they go to um, paintball store or shop to buy equipment upgrade equipment and that there itself you're know, able to grow the shop now the store and the shop can able to expand their product line uh, their product offering and of course it's grow slowly so I mean, it's it takes one um, a one sometimes it takes one single product or one spark to kind of grow and lit up and create like a chain of reaction for everything else and I'm hoping that the box mag will do that for our industry and to grow the community because right now MagFed is growing but I feel like growing at such a, a slow and slow and steady pace that a lot of times players feel that they want to play more but they're not able to have the opportunity and for standard game too like you said you're like guy you need to buy one of these things oh but I can't play at my local fields I have to wait until this MagFed game that's a that's a drawback um, especially I was just at the, the event this weekend too I got a bunch of players coming to our booth at the cave nation and they want to invest through this but they go well it's only 20 rounds I can't really play here today right see, see the problem that we have that right there itself is um, the issue of the uh, mag fed and trying to get the next guy to go of course when you have a mag fed guy we play mag fed games great but they're some of those players they can't afford to do to jump in right away that's where we need to that's where I'm trying to work on and, and, and solve that <laughs> and come a solution for that so I'm almost there hopefully next uh, month or two you guys can see the next gen box mag and able to kind of grow they will, I, I bet you I, I can almost I feel like a hundred ten percent here that once we show the next gen box mag there will be a change of excitement in the air uh, on that very day. You you can you can see the energy that will be put out because imagine you get a box back in this gun. You will still retain all the features, the realistic, the function, but now you have a capacity of 100, 100, 140, 150 rounds. Imagine that, right? And you go boom, 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 boom. Stick your airline in, you can boom, boom, reload and, and, and play, have a good time with play box mag hopper doesn't matter where you go big event small event you your equipment were able to um, carry you through every single game doesn't matter if you play uh, maybe a mag fed game and you are the heavy gunner um, the suppress fire position you can do that too or you go to uh, a hopper game and now you have this cool realistic equipment to play against guys that have a big old hopper on top of course you have more advantage you have better view now you can see right through your your sight and able to take the ammo you're gonna have that um, 
and that big old thing on the top here, which increased your profile, right? And now you get you might get shot right there. And every time you stick your rifle up, boom, you get this little bubble right on the target. Now imagine you get this thing down here out of the way, allows you to add in any type of scope or sight that doesn't hit the hopper. You know, hopper right here. You can't really put a nice scope on there because it will hit the hopper. You, you are, you, you, I know you guys, you do that. I know that, that in a way, us too. Um, when we build custom guns and people, oh, you know what? I want that big old scope, but the hopper is like right there and it gets in the way. Now, next thing you do, you have to you know, add in a little 45 and now you're gonna aim like this. Um, it's, it's still a solution, but it's not the optimate, optimate solution. And that's, I'm, 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 as I go to the event, that's why I love to go to an event because I am on the ground um, level talk to players you know they, they bring me with problems and they bring with solutions hey KT you know I have this problem go okay this is how you solve it okay thank you they walk away and, but as they bring me those those <laughs> suggestion and problem it's allow me to understand the the huddle that they have to go through to able to enjoy and have a good time and they don't have the same you know tool chest as I do I have a better I mean I have a bigger tool chest um, I'm able to design able to prototype and able to come with solution that able to solve those little things for them and that allowed me to enhance the product enhance the um, the ability for the players and that's I think that's where I, that's a part I love the job the most it's able to come with solutions that people bring to me and sometimes um, it's a terrible solution not every solution is great but it's at least get my noodle running and allow me to do that part of the job that I love it's um, come with new stuff and finding solution you know you find a need you you, <laughs> you find a need and then you create that all right guys any question I've been yapping for almost an hour here so hopefully you, hopefully you guys are not tired when I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm tired of my yapping all right any question um, come or concern um, please bring them to me I'll able to um, answer all that question for you so, all right guys last run on this thing right here is your um, last auction um, last minute on this auction you guys are about I'm gonna cut this off at 610 you got eight minutes on this auction blizzard uh, marker right here quad handguard you get a, a laser a point sight right here right, the, right on the, by, by behind the front side you can switch it on and off really nicely integrated uh, nice strike grip viper grip and of course you got your internal air system here, allow you kind of up, upgrade into the air tank if you want to. You guys watch the video. I um, I played that video for you guys earlier. So uh, right now, top bidder is uh, Joseph at 200. You guys want to take from him? You get only seven minutes left. I'm gonna call it up at 610. Okay, uh, Felix, be like uh, a saw M249. Absolutely. So every game or um, scenario you could have a heavy gunner and you can actually allow you to create that different scenario enhance the game a little bit so you guys can uh, participate in different type of setting on that <laughs> oh come on. when there's an event there Kevin I'll be uh, I'll be there but man I've been I've been traveling quite a bit this year so I'm hoping I can keep up next year um, go to the event and able to keep up with production able to keep with operation and able to r d all the stuff it's it's oh man it's gonna be a lot of um it's a lot on my plate i can of tell you that but like i said that's a that's a thing that what i do i enjoy and it seemed like um like a hobby in a way so it doesn't seem like work that much sometimes you know some of you guys give me a hard time i feel like work but most of the time i feel like i'm um I'm doing the things I love the most, so the time just passed by quickly every day. All right, guys. Uh, any questions? Go ahead and throw it out for me, and I'm able to, um, you know, address them for you. Alex is asking me something here. Um, four six eight DMR kits at Kilo six nine. I have some parts, uh, Alex, but I'll bring some part in with me. I think I have uppers, bolt. Um, and all that part out there, but you know what? Right after the show, I can grab some valves and parts to make sure I have them. So, you want to uh, have kits, I'll have them there for you, just little parts. Um, I'll make sure I get that for you, <laughs> Nick. Yeah, man, I need a drink after this one for sure. Um, Felix, have a good night, buddy. Um, oh, you gotta go pack. I know, I 
I have not packed yet, so I'm gonna go home and pack Leon and Felix, and then hop into bed, sleep a couple hours, and uh, up and up to Daisy early in the morning. Head out. It's gonna be it's gonna be a long day tomorrow. I'm gonna be in the flight all day long. Hopefully, the flight gonna have Wi-Fi and get there and do a little bit of texting and chat and uh, Facebook time here. Now, some that's that's one thing I like. Sometimes when you travel, give me some quiet time and think because you know when you're moving too fast. You get all these things going on. You're bombarded with all these uh, uh, the questions and problems you know, try to solve. You don't really have time to kind of you know bring your at uh, a stable level way you know, to you know abstractly bring all these thoughts. But hopefully, have some uh, slow time there on the on the flight out to Pennsylvania tomorrow. So. Uh, you guys, if you guys going to an event and you guys have anybody who needs a marker for loaner, go to our site, um, go to ambassador page there. We have a lot of ambassador. Let them contact ambassador. Okay, ambassador will loan them equipment. They have tons of loan markers. It doesn't have to be our markers. It can be any markers that they have. They will be more than happy to loan it to you to check it out, how it functions. They'll give you the inputs and what works for them, what's not working for them. The idea is that you know the ambassador were able to get them loan markers, able to support them in a way where they able to loan you what they have. It's so like I said, it, it, a lot of them don't want to use our equipment; they use other brand as well. So don't you know? It's not what all we do. Um, it's about exclusive what we what we offer they can use anything they want as long as they love it and long as it works for them then we we really support that that's that's a, we're a little bit different in a sense we don't not trying to kind of focus on all we do uh, and, and about us we try and focus on about the players about community let the ambassador grow with you guys so you have any equipment that you need and they have it they be more than happy to help you and if you have an equipment problem too Go see them, and they try to help you as much as possible. And um, they in turn contact us, and we can support them at that level. So, um, if, if you are guys starting into the sport, and you know someone that does, um, have them contact our ambassador, so that way they can do the best that they can to get you guys into the game and keep you in the game. And uh, that's the you know that's the um, the the. I, <laughs> that's the main thing that why we create ambassador program in the first place. It's allow us to um, do support the players because our ambassadors going out there to support the players and in turn we support ambassador. It's kind of a network that we're trying to build so that way the ambassador can um, resolve the our eyes and ears. If there's an issue, they can bring us into the conversation, allow us to get you guys the. Um, the information and solution that you're looking for. Uh, what, uh, Nick? Um, you're gonna have to uh, replay the video, and then uh, after the show, you can actually replay this video, or you can go to YouTube after the show. Uh, I'm probably gonna turn it on for you on part one of the tornado, the AK-12 markers, or you call it the, the kit, and you can actually start to pre-order. Actually, I think uh, it's, you can actually pre-order now too. On AK-12 tornado kit, I'm looking about three, uh, three months um, to ship them out for you guys. Uh, so you guys in a hurry to get that, go ahead and do that. Rondell, I don't know if I can bring the box mag out for you. Uh, I'm not planning to check anything in. I'm afraid if I bring the box mag out for you, the the old version, of course, um, they can confiscate that at the TSA. Some of them are not very, um, you know, passenger friendly. Um, just like I was gonna message you on that if you want I can ship them out for you but I I just don't want to lose a box mag that you want I think I have a few left so you guys want the current box mag I think I have like about four or five units um, just to warn you um, I'm not able to support you on that so you buy them um, I'll get you fantastic deal but you have to work on it your own um, so just to FYI I've been I hoard a few of them just in case somebody needs support or replacement I have them but now the gen 2 is about to hit yes one of them I do have them um, if you want if you know how to work on them and, and able to use it all right guys all right uh, Joseph Cunningham congratulations buddy $200 I think you got a fantastic deal of 200 bucks because uh, this marker right here easily 
go for about three, three and a half. So you guys, um, you, you got a, a great market here. Uh, you want to stop by Joseph, you can pick the, this up or I can bring to opposite N19 for you guys, uh, for you. So you guys can play that. All right. A uh, really quick shout out for the all person N19 is coming up well, not next week, the following week. So this week, after next week, is all person N19. You guys coming out to the West Coast. We have that event here. Um, I'm gonna push more, give you guys more information next week if you guys go to event. All right, guys, any question, comment, concern, please email me directly, kt at mcsus.com. And if you don't want to go to my email, go to um, go to <laughs> go to an on-site, and I and I'll be on chat too. If I'm, I don't answer, just put a note and KT's message for you, and we'll have a chance of it will answer you to our, your message directly onto the site chat. And you want to hit me on Facebook, um, KT uh, MCS, I think uh, something like that, or just search for my name, KT Tran. I'm able to, uh, you can find me, you can message me directly on Facebook or go to the MCS Facebook directly, message me on that too. Sometimes I answer those questions as well. But if you guys are going to um, need my help or anything, don't be shy. Email me, uh, message me, and let me have the opportunity to, opportunity to kind of resolve any problem you have. So um, hit me up on it. So. Like I said, I, 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 doesn't matter what the problem is, hit me up so that I can resolve it for you. I know a lot of you guys, oh, I don't want to borrow, K, borrow KT at this and that. Um, if I don't know about it, uh, I can't solve it for you. I'd rather that you guys just uh, uh, hit me directly so I can um, quickly jump that on for you. And if I don't reply for you like in a day or so, um, message me again. Sometimes message do get lost in cyberspace. Sometimes I get so many messages that go to the very bottom. I, won't, I, mean, I missed it, I'm sorry. But uh, if I don't um, get to you like in about four, 24 to 48 hours, hit me up again for sure um, because uh, I am very good at getting back to people. And if I can't resolve your problem, I just say I'm sorry, I can't resolve it. But when I'm able to, I'll definitely um, roll out the red carpet for you and uh, resolve that for you. All right, guys. All right, thank you guys so much for being part of this show. Um, without this show, cannot doesn't exist without you and I know you guys have tons of things to do and really um, have other option to spend your hour on Wednesday but I appreciate it that you guys spend this hour with me love to see you meet you guys at an event so if I'm an event just you know stop by the MCS booth and just say hi uh, meet you in person so uh, at least you um, <laughs> this we get to meet right all right guys Thank you so much. I'll hopefully, if you guys are in the East Coast, I'll see you guys at Kill 69. If you guys are in the West Coast, I will see you at our person N19. Like I said, I'm gonna detail you guys on the N19 event. It's gonna be completely different uh, uh, game playing style. It's gonna be I'm gonna feel it a tournament event all in one. So it's uh, something that we're gonna experiment this time around. Let's see how it goes. It works out great. We're gonna implement this into the future. Okay, guys. I'm gonna play a quick ending video here, and then I'll see you guys at an event next week. Take care, guys. Have a good evening.